When it comes to anything competitive, I've always found myself being quite patriotic and very proud of other Australians within spaces that I care about. Australian communities tend to be relatively smaller, but despite this, we saw a pretty sizable increase in Final Fantasy speedrunning, both in the amount of active players, as well as player skill within Australia. This video is to highlight the many achievements and milestones of Australian Final Fantasy speedrunners in 2023, and I'm hoping that this will become something of a yearly tradition. I'll quickly note as well that this won't cover Final Fantasy XIV. The game has so much going on and I, I simply don't know how it all works or how it's all kept track of. It's a different beast altogether and just not something I'm able to include. With that all being said though, let's start looking at last year's community achievements, which actually started with myself. On the 8th of January, I improved my Final Fantasy IX any percent personal best with a time of 9 hours, 12 minutes and 41 seconds which a few days later, I would improve to 9 hours, 6 minutes and 8 seconds. On the 3rd of February, Cyanide Sugar and Elbody completed their first co-op speedrun of Stranger of Paradise with a time of 2 hours, 19 minutes and 31 seconds. You'll hear a lot more about this game. Cyanide Sugar also went on to complete her first speedrun of Final Fantasy VIII PC, No Manipulations, with a time of 8 hours, 4 minutes and 17 seconds a few days later. On the 8th of February, Rotomoto completed his first HD console speedrun of Final Fantasy X-2 with a time of 2 hours, 54 minutes and 42 seconds. At this point, a tense back and forth would begin between two Australian runners within Stranger of Paradise's new game co-op category, during which 13 new world records were set, with some of these lasting less than 24 hours. The runners in question were Cyanide Sugar, along with her co-op partner Elbody, and Rotomoto, with his co-op partner, Yakuza. It all began with Cyanide Sugar and Elbody setting a new world record on the 14th of February with a time of 1 hour, 48 minutes and 16 seconds, taking the record from Rotomoto and Yakuza that was set in 2022. Cyanide Sugar and Elbody lowered this time on the 19th to a time of 1 hour, 34 minutes and 31 seconds, and again a week later to a time of 1 hour, 31 minutes and 54 seconds. Rotomoto and his co-op partner Yakuza returned and began doing attempts to regain the record. They'd set their new personal best with a time of 1 hour, 37 minutes and 53 seconds on the 1st of March. The following day, Cyanide Sugar and Elbody improved their world record to a time of 1 hour, 28 minutes and 12 seconds. Rotomoto and Yakuza would finally reclaim their world record with a time of 1 hour, 28 minutes and 7 seconds on the 5th of March. However, this only lasted until the 8th of March when Cyanide Sugar and Elbody reclaimed that world record with a time of 1 hour, 26 minutes and 12 seconds. This would be another world record that would only last one day as Rotomoto and Yakuza took back the first place time at 1 hour, 24 minutes and 49 seconds. And for the third day in a row, a new world record was set, this time by Cyanide Sugar and Elbody at 1 hour, 24 minutes and 22 seconds. On the 12th, Rotomoto and Yakuza took the record back with a time of 1 hour, 23 minutes and 54 seconds. And on the same day, mere hours later, Cyanide Sugar and Elbody landed a 1 hour, 22 minute and 4 second time. The next two times that these duos would set would be where their personal bests and the world record stand today. On the 13th of March, a new world record was set by Rotomoto and Yakuza with a time of 1 hour, 21 minutes and 39 seconds, which sits at second place today after Cyanide Sugar and Elbody finished a run in 1 hour, 19 minutes and 38 seconds on the 15th of March, which again is where the world record stands today. This was an excellent effort by both duos, bringing the world record down by almost 40 minutes during this exchange. Meanwhile, during all of this, the runner Katombas was working on improving his Final Fantasy VII or Bosses personal best, which he brought down to a time of 10 hours and 4 minutes on the 25th of March. In April, I started playing Final Fantasy VIII again and taking it a bit more seriously. Me and Cyanide Sugar were looking to get the game into the Oz Speedruns Marathon event coming up in a few months time. On the 9th, I brought my Final Fantasy VIII PC personal best down to 7 hours, 49 minutes and 39 seconds. On the 17th, Katombas would set a new world record for Final Fantasy VII all bosses in the Turbo category with a time of 9 hours, 55 minutes and 32 seconds. 
And speaking of Final Fantasy VIII at marathons, later that week, Cyanide Sugar would perform a speedrun of Final Fantasy VIII No Manipulations at the No Glitches Allowed marathon event. The next day, on the 21st of April, Katombas would set yet another Final Fantasy VII All Bosses world record, this time for the HD console category. On the 25th, I improved my Final Fantasy VIII PC personal best to a time of 7 hours, 43 minutes and 48 seconds. And a few hours later, Cyanide Sugar would once again represent Final Fantasy VIII No Manipulations, this time at the Retrothon Marathon. Truthfully, the next few months were a bit slow. On the 3rd of May, I improved my Final Fantasy VIII personal best again, but this time for the PlayStation category, with a time of 8 hours, 36 minutes and 14 seconds. I came back to PC in June, improving my personal best there to 7 hours, 40 minutes and 39 seconds on the 17th, and the next day, once again, to 7 hours, 35 minutes and 30 seconds. In mid-July, Australia's flagship speedrun event, Oz Speedruns Marathon, started, and a few Final Fantasy games got in. Sadly, Cyanide Sugar couldn't attend due to personal circumstances, but on the 13th, I performed a speedrun of Final Fantasy VIII PC. And on the 16th, Chikochi, also known as the Sheriff of Ten Two, returned to ASM with her signature speed game, this time for the HD No Creature Creator category, which I also commentated. The event was fantastic, and our runs were really well received by the wider Oz Speedruns community. After the event, on the 30th of July, Glint improved his Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate personal best to 48 minutes and 57 seconds. This would be further improved on the 2nd of August to 47 minutes and 47 seconds. On the 9th, Katombas improved his Final Fantasy VII HD No Slots personal best to 7 hours, 12 minutes and 58 seconds. On the 12th of August, I would also improve my Final Fantasy VIII PlayStation personal best to 8 hours, 29 minutes and 27 seconds, which would put me in top 10 for the category. It was around this time we started to see a lot of newcomers from the Oz speedrun scene try their hand at some Final Fantasy speedruns. The first of which was Kenora, who I began somewhat coaching in Final Fantasy IX as they started learning the PC No Major Skips category with the cutscene remover mod. Then there was Dakli, who was more known for speedrunning games in the Spyro series. He completed his first Final Fantasy X-2 speedrun in the PC No Creatures category and got a time of 3 hours, 26 minutes and 31 seconds on the 13th of August. On the 14th of August, Cyanide Sugar did a speedrun of Stranger of Paradise for the Games Done Quick Flame Fatales event, and on the same day, a few hours later, Glint improved his Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate personal best to 47 minutes and 3 seconds. On the 19th, Dactly improved his personal best for Final Fantasy X-2 PC No Creatures with a time of 3 hours, 12 minutes and 6 seconds. On the 22nd of August, Glint set 3 new personal bests for Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate, 41 minutes and 21 seconds on the Easy New Game Plus category, 44 minutes 27 seconds in the Normal New Game Plus category, and 43 minutes and 30 seconds again in Normal New Game Plus. At the same time, the previously mentioned player Kenora, who was primarily known for their Hades and Metroid Dread speedruns, would complete their first speedrun of Final Fantasy IX's cutscene remover mod. Kenora had expressed interest in Final Fantasy speedruns at a couple of ASM events, so I was really happy to see them finally take the dive. On the 25th of August, the RPG Limit Break Final Fantasy relay started, and it was fantastic, and it had a good showing of Australian players and commentators. Due to some last minute unavailability, I got the chance to fill in as a commentator for the Final Fantasy IX run before I represented Team Chocobo in Final Fantasy VIII. Cyanide Sugar was a commentator for that run, and Chikochi got to commentate Final Fantasy X-2. The event was awesome, and we all really appreciated being able to participate. During the event, Dactly would complete his first Final Fantasy X-2 PS2 speedrun with a time of 3 hours, 53 minutes and 45 seconds, and further improve his Final Fantasy X-2 PC No Creatures personal best to 3 hours and 2 minutes, placing him 6th in the category. On the following day, on the 29th of August, Kenora would complete their first Final Fantasy IX HD No Major Skip speedrun with a time of 8 hours, 15 minutes and 4 seconds. This would be improved a few days later to a time of 8 hours, 10 minutes and 25 seconds. On the 6th of September, 
Glint set a new world record for Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate for the Easy New Game Plus category at 40 minutes and 28 seconds. He would also go on to grab the normal New Game Plus world record the following day at 42 minutes and 20 seconds. On the 12th, he'd further improve his personal best for the New Game Easy category to 45 minutes and 44 seconds. And the next day, Kenora would cut some time off their Final Fantasy IX HD personal best with a time of 8 hours, 2 minutes and 40 seconds. On the 17th, Dactly did his first Final Fantasy X-2 PS2 100% speedrun with a time of 13 hours, 18 minutes and 15 seconds, which immediately placed him second in the category. A couple days later on the 19th, Chikochi improved her Final Fantasy X-2 PC No Creatures personal best to 3 hours, 7 minutes and 57 seconds. This was something I knew she'd been wanting to improve for a really long time, so it was good to see her finally break into the top 10 for that category. On the 23rd, I cut a few seconds from my Final Fantasy VIII PlayStation personal best with a time of 8 hours, 29 minutes and 21 seconds. And on the same day, Dactly improved his 10 to 100% speedrun to a time of 13 hours, 4 minutes and 18 seconds. The next day, Glint improved his Final Fantasy VII Integrate Easy personal best to a time of 44 minutes, 39 seconds. I also improved my Final Fantasy VIII PlayStation personal best to a time of 8 hours, 25 minutes and 38 seconds, which not only placed me third in the category, but was a welcome improvement after the run just one day prior only managed to cut 6 seconds from my PB. Around this time, a leaderboard was set up for Final Fantasy X-2 HD console No Creature Creator, and on the 26th, Chikochi set one of its first times at 3 hours, 36 minutes and 42 seconds, which was second place at the time. And speaking of Final Fantasy X-2, on the 29th, Dactly set a new world record for its PlayStation 2 100% category at 12 hours, 44 minutes and 2 seconds. Kenora would also complete their first Final Fantasy IX HD or Bosses speedrun, which came in with a time of 12 hours, 18 minutes and 49 seconds, which was second place at the time. To start October, Shikochi set the new world record for Final Fantasy X-2 HD console No Creatures with a time of 3 hours, 29 minutes and 31 seconds, which is also where the world record sits today. I also lowered my Final Fantasy VIII PlayStation personal best to a time of 8 hours, 23 minutes and 29 seconds a few days later. On the 7th, Glint performed a speedrun of Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate at the Oz Speedruns PAX event, which Kenora was a commentator for. During this, another newcomer to the scene, Unicorn Phoenix, completed their first speedrun of Final Fantasy XVI Any% Percent Story with a time of 8 hours, 39 minutes and 31 seconds. A week later, on the 14th, Kenora improved their Final Fantasy IX PC No Major Skips personal best to a time of 7 hours, 59 minutes and 42 seconds, breaking that 8 hour barrier. That time was improved on the 18th to 7 hours, 55 minutes and 35 seconds, which actually placed Kenora above myself, which was a nice passing of the torch. On the 22nd of October, Dactly improved his Final Fantasy X-2 PlayStation 2 100% world record to 12 hours, 39 minutes and 8 seconds, which is still where the world record stands today. Katombas also improved his Final Fantasy VII HD No Slots personal best to 6 hours, 59 minutes and 4 seconds. Getting this run under 7 hours was a long-term goal of Katombas, which he was very happy to achieve. The next day, I lowered my Final Fantasy VIII PlayStation personal best to 8 hours, 22 minutes and 41 seconds. On the 25th, Glint improved his Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate personal best with a new route that saves time by removing the need for elemental ninjutsu. The time achieved was 43 minutes and 46 seconds and placed Glint second in the category. Kenora went on to improve their Final Fantasy IX PC No Major Skips personal best to 7 hours, 45 minutes and 4 seconds on the 4th of November. On the 6th, Unicorn Phoenix improved their Final Fantasy XVI story personal best to 8 hours, 17 minutes and 28 seconds. Dactly and Kenora both started their first attempts of Final Fantasy IX PlayStation Any% Percent on the 11th of November. While Kenora's run was unable to finish due to some unfortunate hardware issues, Dactly secured a time of 10 hours, 10 minutes and 7 seconds. Notably, he ran out of Phoenix Downs during this run and needed to spend almost 20 minutes backtracking through Memoria. 
The following day, Glint would break into second place for Final Fantasy VII Integrade in the PC Easy category with a run of 42 minutes and 47 seconds. And similarly, Unicorn Phoenix would reach second place in Final Fantasy XVI Story with a run of 8 hours, 10 minutes and 45 seconds. And lastly, I'd get an improvement of my own, bringing my Final Fantasy VIII personal best down to 8 hours, 21 minutes and 47 seconds. It was quite a successful weekend for us. By the next weekend, Kenora's hardware issues had been resolved, and they completed their first Final Fantasy IX PlayStation speedrun at 9 hours, 55 minutes and 35 seconds. And Dactly worked his personal best down to 9 hours, 24 minutes and 29 seconds. Katomba's also started learning Final Fantasy VIII, setting his first time on the HD console category at 10 hours, 20 minutes and 38 seconds. On the 22nd of November, Cyanide Sugar would return to Stranger of Paradise with Elbody and Zayden, this time on the PC version, and complete a co-op run with a time of 1 hour, 37 minutes and 17 seconds. This run is technically world record, but the load remover had some issues, so it needed to be timed RTA instead of load removed, which relegated the trio to second place. On the 23rd, Katombas improves his Final Fantasy VII HD or Bosses world record to a time of 9 hours, 14 minutes and 46 seconds, and is preparing to grind this down further. Kenora would make another improvement to their Final Fantasy IX PlayStation personal best to 9 hours, 41 minutes and 46 seconds. To start off December, on the first of the month, Rotomoto completed his first speedrun of Final Fantasy X-2 HD console in the No Creatures category with a time of 3 hours, 47 minutes and 59 seconds. The next day, I lowered my Final Fantasy VIII PlayStation personal best to 8 hours, 20 minutes and 44 seconds. Dax would go on to secure a 3 day streak for us, lowering his personal best on Final Fantasy IX to 9 hours, 19 minutes and 14 seconds. This run faced some issues with Death Guys and unfortunately had a 57 minute disc fall. Kenora found improvement in their PB with a time of 9 hours, 17 minutes and 8 seconds a few days later as well. Unicorn Phoenix had quite a major breakthrough in Final Fantasy XVI, being the second person to break the 8 hour milestone with a run of 7 hours, 59 minutes and 54 seconds in the story category. The same day, Dak would once again unfortunately have some issues in Memoria. After dying to Malaris and going all the way back to Nova Dragon, he persevered and despite an even less fortunate disc 4, clocking in at 59 minutes, he'd improve his personal best to 9 hours, 18 minutes and 1 second. On the 10th, I broke a massive goal that I'd set myself in Final Fantasy VIII with a time of 8 hours, 19 minutes and 16 seconds. I'm the fourth person to ever break this barrier without pre-new game manipulations, and the second to do it in this particular category. On the same day, Dak would finally overcome both Memoria and the 9 hour 10 minute barrier with a time of 9 hours, 9 minutes and 45 seconds on Final Fantasy IX PSX. Kenora also improved their personal best a few days later with a time of 9 hours, 13 minutes and 54 seconds, which also suffered an unfortunate Grand Cross against Necron. Katombas also took down his Final Fantasy VIII HD console personal best with a time of 9 hours, 14 minutes and 51 seconds on the 15th. And on the 17th, I did my first Final Fantasy VIII JP speedrun with a time of 8 hours, 41 minutes and 31 seconds. Note that JP includes the console power on as well as the credits, which is about 25 minutes in total. At this point, we saw another newcomer. Rippy, who specialises in Portal and Titanfall 2 speedruns, completed her first speedrun of Final Fantasy X with the cutscene remover mod. This was an impressive first run, considering that Final Fantasy X is a very delicate speedrun. A lot of mistakes can make the run unable to finish. She also lost Blitzball and had to run without the Strength Sphere, so overall a tall order for a new runner. The run clocked in at 5 hours, 21 minutes and 28 seconds. Katombas once again improved his Final Fantasy VIII HD console personal best, lowering his time to 9 hours, 4 minutes and 13 seconds, and also began learning Final Fantasy VI. The year ended somewhat fittingly as it started, with a Final Fantasy IX personal best improvement, this time by Dak Lee, who lowered his time to 9 hours, 2 minutes and 56 seconds on the 28th of December. There's been a lot that we as a subset of a community have to be proud of from this year. And while I've done my best to include all of our achievements, what I'll unfortunately never be able to show is the countless hours of learning, practice, 
failed runs, close calls, and so on. It can be really intimidating to pick up a run of this length and very difficult to grind continuously. So I do truly commend every runner, and especially our newcomers, for all of our efforts here. I know I said this last time as well, but I'm really sorry for scarce uploads. The Hardest Bosses series is continuing. I got distracted with actually grinding Final Fantasy VIII and kind of forgot about the whole YouTube thing. I really am going to try and get this to a monthly series, depending on how lengthy the research portion of the video is, but I'll actually keep people informed if there are any delays. I have some other projects in the works too, and I'll of course continue streaming my actual speedruns on Twitch and YouTube. Here's to 2024. Thanks for watching.